Good afternoon fellow Plexers. Today's video is going to be a software versus hardware transcoding discussion with a demonstration of software transcodes off a 12th gen i9 um, based system. I booted my desktop system into Ubuntu and I don't use this system for Plex server but it does have a 12th gen i9 processor in it with a NVIDIA 3060 GPU. I've set up a test server on this install and I've disabled hardware accelerated transcoding. So this document is sometimes the only document people see. What kind of CPU do I need for my server? And there's some Plexmark requirements depending on the type of media you want, you're going to transcode. So two things. Transcoding is never a desired feature. Never. It degrades your media. It's a fail-safe feature to make sure your media gets through to the client device under harsh conditions. The harsh conditions could be an incompatibility with the client device itself or it could be bandwidth issues on the server's outgoing connection or the client remote client app's incoming connection. So the other thing is let's talk about software, the word software, which isn't mentioned in this article, but is instead implied in comparison to moving transcoding to the hardware of an NVIDIA GPU or the hardware of the iGPU built into many Intel processors. Now, there's not official support, but some AMD GPUs and CPUs through their iGPU offers unofficial hardware accelerated streaming too. So, even though the word software is never mentioned, we have to understand that all software runs on the CPU unless it's a special process directed to other hardware. So we can lazily say this is the software um, article and this is the hardware article. So I just wanted to get that out of the way, which is why I often say software versus hardware transcoding. Now I already have a scenario set up. This is my um, desktop computer with this processor in it and if I go to transcoder you'll see that I've disabled hardware acceleration and tone mapping and I could have left tone mapping on for this test but I didn't think it was a fair test to do it that way and you'll see this is the device this server uses for hardware acceleration of a transcoded stream, but it's all turned off now. So I haven't done much in this area. And what I discovered with a little testing is that when you start up one stream and throw it into a forced transcode, the CPU usage jumps up immediately. Eventually, after a few minutes, it settles down. Well, the same with the second stream. And that settled down pretty evenly. When I added the third stream, that popped CPU usage up and then eventually settled down, but it's more of a wave now than a straight line. So this is where we are at now. I have my Shield Pro in the living room transcoding this down to um, 12 megabits per second, a 1080p stream. I have my older 2017 Shield in the bedroom doing the same thing. And I have my OnePlus Pad tablet that's sitting in front of me also transcoding to the same level. So let's add in another direct stream and this time it will be from the tube style NVIDIA Shield in my office. So instead of watching dashboard, let's watch the CPU usage. Well, actually, I jumped the gun because this is a direct play. And this is always interesting. Like, I, I've known these bit rates are estimated, but if I start this movie up on any device, on any of my test servers or my real servers, 
it's always reported at 104 megabits per second. But when I get multiple direct streams going, the bit rate raises to 192 megabits per second, and I have no idea why. All right, so let's watch the CPU usage when I force this into the same level of transcoding. So I have a choice between 12 megabits per second and 8 megabits, megabits per second 1080p. I'll pick the 12 megabit per second. And I can notice my fan speed increase on my desktop PCU, but unfortunately you're probably just going to hear my central AC running. Right, so we do see that CPU usage kick up. And now everything's marked as the same transcode. And if we drop down, we're still running a high level of CPU usage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick in my laptop running the HTPC client app without waiting for that to decrease the CPU usage. All right, so we now have five streams going and this one is the last one added and it's direct play. So let's put that into a transcode. All right, the, the media is playing, the sound's down. You see a little uptick of the CPU usage. The device is almost at 100%, but still Plex server isn't quite, and it's bending down, so it's probably going to do a little wave. And if we come back, we see everything's in transcoded state. So I'm surprised by the results of this video, but it's also the most powerful piece of hardware I have to play with. I am sure if I switch to my my ninth gen test system with a i5-9500 processor in it and four software transcodes on that, I will not get these five transcodes. Now I'm not really set up to do this today, but it would be interesting to see how many I could get to break this, but at the same time I don't want to power my desktop PC up to such a state that I might have to break Plex. Like, that's not my goal here. My goal is simply to show the difference and in comparison to my other videos, you see how low CPU usage is when using the iGPU of two different systems and how many streams I was able to successfully have. Now the honest truth is I don't have that much transcoding going on with my server. I have 20 friends and family invited to the server and only about 10 of them use the server regularly. The other 10 maybe once in a blue moon but I have 10 primary users um, who in one week four or five or six may be watching videos and sometimes all at the same time. And out of all those users I have hardly any transcoding of video going on. It's mostly audio transcode on incompatible devices. Samsung TV is notorious for not being a great client app. It's always transcoding maybe half the audio of my collection. Um, Roku devices are the same. If they don't have a sound bar, they're always transcoding audio. And that's the majority of the transcoding on my server. It's not video transcoding. I have gig internet service and I've set almost all of my, well, all my in-town friends and family up personally and a few people I've helped reconfigure their local networking to get better Wi-Fi to their device 
or kind of twisted their arm to stop using their really old Samsung TV that still has a great picture to switch to something like a little Google TV device from Walmart. The second gen O&N device is a great little $20 device. So local people I take care of to try to eliminate problems but there's some remote users still using a Roku. My, my middle son still insists on using Google Chrome in a browser instead of the HTPC client app. It's his last willful act as an adult child of mine, I guess, but it's only an audio transcode, so I don't really care. All right, so I'm going to stop the video, reset up, and, and start recording again to then join the two videos for one big software transcoding test. So thank you for watching. And I'm back with the setup complete for the new test. I'm now on the other test Ubuntu server. I've got two streams going of the same movie, both a software transcode and the CPU usage is pop right up to 100%. So let's have a little discussion, see if we can wait for that to come down. This is a Intel Core i5-9500 based system. The system has 32 gigs of RAM in it and the pass mark score is just under uh, 9,800 or just under 10,000. Alright, so Google Chrome is being a little funny. Let me refresh that. So, these two streams have been running for a couple minutes and the CPU usage is locked on high. So this is going to be the more typical experience of a Plex server owner because I'm sure there's more 8th through 10th gen Intel CPUs being used out there on average versus a 12th gen i9. But this is going to change my recommendations if someone doesn't want to purchase a Plex Pass for some crazy reason to take advantage of hardware acceleration and all the other Plex Pass features, well spend your money on a more expensive Intel processor. Because the first test we ran with five streams going without buffering was pretty impressive. Alright, so let's add in my tablet because it doesn't look like that CPU usage is going to drop and we'll see if we can break my bench system. Okay, so here's my OnePlus pad and I have to watch careful to see if any of the playing changes to buffering. So let's force that into the same transcode. Alright, all I see is spinning on the tablet. Let's see if the movie starts. It's showing, it's showing up here as buffering and now playing. And it's playing on my tablet, but we've got buffering on the Shield Pro, that went away. We've got buffering on the other one. So it looks like three streams off this ninth gen processor yeah, is problematic. Let's make this full screen. Buffering. Buffering is like whack-a-mole. We'll give it a couple minutes to see if it levels out, but this, these three streams may have broken the ability to transcode on this device. So this is more what I expected at an earlier level with my i9 processor, because the, the document only really said two and a half streams and five were playing buffer free. This other device with a much lower pass mark screen handled two streams, but three is too much for it. And actually there's less buffering going on than I might have expected, 
but it's enough to make Plex an unpleasant experience. So this, this was a real quick test. I'm just waiting to see if it settles out at all. Well, my tablet, even though it didn't say buffering, was buffering before it set it. So let's take the tablet back out of that transcode. All right, so now we're at a direct play of that device. And I, well, we still have some buffering going on on the Shield Pro. Let's see if the buffering stays away now that two devices are transcoding and one is direct playing. So we still have some buffering popping up on one device. So on the i5-9500 CPU, we're really only getting one stable direct stream out of it. Let's do one more test. Let's dr drop out the direct play and give it another couple minutes to see if either of these client devices report buffering. Now, I don't know how many direct streams I could get off from this device, but I imagine as many as I wanted to. Even of this high bitrate 4K media, as long as I had the outgoing bandwidth to serve up the number of direct streams to local or remote client devices. Okay, so simply stopping the direct play seemed to eliminate buffering. Let me just start that again and see if the buffering comes back. And as mentioned in an earlier part of what's going to be two joint videos, you see how the bit rate is 104? But if I get enough of them going, it jumps up to 192 for direct streams. Alright, so it is causing buffering on the Shield Pro. Just by having a direct stream added to the mix. So we'll stop the tablet. And even with the tablet stopped, you'll see that our CPU usage for both the system and the server is pegged at 100%. So this is, this is already straining the limits of the system. So I think this is a good video. Um, both videos together are good. It tells us a lot. My expectations were lower. Well, we, we have some buffering going on again, even with the third stream stopped. My expectations were lower for my 12th Gen i9 processor and I am seeing the results I would expect to see on the 9th gen i5. So I'll put these two videos together and hopefully that'll just help inform everyone on the capabilities of, of, of software transcoding. Um, and again, my own personal experience is I don't have a lot of transcoding of video on my server in the first place and I attribute that more to my gig fiber connection and my insistence that my friends and family use decent client devices on their end. And my, my media isn't a super high bit rate per average in the first place. A lot of TV shows are around 8 to 12 megabits per second and most of my movies are 3 to 5. And I don't share 4K media. So thanks for watching and happy plexing.